Hi, I'm Mark Clay, one of the regional ministers here at the East Midlands Baptist Association. During the Lent series that we've been doing together, we've been thinking about what it means to give things up. Giving up to God, for example, our desire to be in control. Giving up to God our expectations or our temptation at times to feel superior. Giving up to God our desire to be popular. Giving up to God our lives. And yet so much of our world is not about giving up anything, but about getting everything, getting more and more, getting what you want, getting what you feel you're entitled to, getting ahead and getting it now and getting it quickly, getting it when I want it. But what does all this getting of things add up to in the end? No matter how much stuff we have, no matter how rich we are, no matter how much power we have, none of it really matters in the end. When we come to the end of this life, we cannot take any of it with us. Many years ago now, I read a quote which was attributed to Woody Allen. It made me laugh simply, well, simply because it's funny. See what you think. Woody Allen said, I don't want to achieve immortality through my work. I want to achieve it by not dying. See what I mean? But as I thought about this quote, it made me laugh more, but actually for a different reason. Because of the futility of Mr. Allen's desire. You see, we're all going to die. We know that. And no matter how healthily we eat, no matter how many vitamins we take each day, no matter how much exercise we do, no matter how much plastic surgery we have to make us look younger, no matter how low our cholesterol, we cannot avoid it. David Gerald said something else. He said this, life is hard, then you die. Then they throw dirt in your face. Then the worms eat you. Be grateful it happens in that order. <laughs> Friends, dying is something that will come to all of us sooner or later. Yes, we may be remembered for a while, maybe even for hundreds of years, but we'll always be remembered for what we did before we died, what we did while we were alive in our lifetime. And no matter what we do, no matter how great our achievements, our life will be summed up with the words, then they died. And this is a truth that applies to everyone who has ever lived apart from one person, Jesus Christ. Like every other famous person, we remember the wonderful things that Jesus did and said during his lifetime. And at Easter, we remember the story of how he died. But with Jesus uniquely, we also remember that the story didn't end with those words and then he died. Because on Easter Sunday, we also remember and celebrate that this man, Jesus Christ, uniquely came back to life. We remember the story of his resurrection. This makes Jesus unique in world history and simply the most important person ever to have lived on this planet. The story of his life, death and resurrection show him to be fully human, just like you and me, but also fully God. And therefore the only person worth following. The only person worth giving your life to. The only person worth living for and certainly the only person worth dying for. Because just as Jesus rose from the dead, he has promised that those of us who trust in him, give our lives to him, will also be raised to life, even should we die. If Jesus is not capable of keeping this promise, then how outrageous are his words in John 11 verse 25. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And then he asked them the question, do you believe this? 
Do you believe this? This is what the whole Easter celebration is about. So unlike Mr. Allen, I don't have to do all I can to live forever, which is a hopeless task through my own efforts. All I have to do is give my life to Jesus Christ to achieve immortality. This is the reason he came. This is, that the true, this is the truth that's at the heart of the Christian message. Jesus came and died in our place on the cross. He gave up his life for us. The immortal God gave up his life for us so that we could share in his immortality. This is not something we can earn. It's not something that we can achieve through our own genius or talent. It's the free gift of God in Christ for those who believe, for those who will give up their life to Christ. And all we can do is gratefully accept that gift of God. All we can do at Easter is say thank you. All we can do is open our hands and our hearts and receive the gift that God paid so dearly to purchase for us. This, friends, is the Easter story. And it's a life-transforming story, a world-transforming story. I've talked a lot about death in this video, but Easter is about death and about life and about the one who is the Lord of both of those things. So as we, over the next week or so, contemplate the events of that first Easter, I pray that we will know the comfort and the hope that this story brings into the strife and the stress of our everyday lives. And on Easter Sunday morning, let us joyfully and wholeheartedly join the shout that rings around the world from every Christian church. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Friends, from myself and all the team at the East Midlands Baptist Association, we pray that you'll have a great Easter and that you will know God's richest blessing on you and on your church ministry. God bless you.